Hi, Watson. You ready to get dressed? Okay, you're getting dressed under their neck, clasp it at the back. That way your hands are not fussing underneath their chin because the hands under their chin are to be massaged and to encourage eye contact. If I'm under here trying to do a clasp up, it's just irritating. So clasps are done at the back and then I just let them know, hey, you're dressed, you've got your, you've got your uh, going out outfit on. Yeah, thank you too. Hi, my love. Oh, hey. no, okay, not on the face. Thank you. You can kiss my hand if you wish. Thank you. How are you today? How are you, my love? How are you? Yeah, I had a good, had a good breakfast. You did. You have enough turkey in your belly? Oh, nice release. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Can I have your paw? Thank you. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's so lovely. Thank you. Can I have your back paw? Oh, back paw. Okay, not with your mouth. So, collar, hand. I'm not allowed to chew my hand. Oh, you want the belly rubs? Okay, you can do belly rubs while I do this. Okay, there's my little paw. You need to bite on something. Go ahead. You're not biting on my skin. You're not biting on my shirt. Yeah. So another reason why they bite is sometimes it can be overstimulating. So if I was sitting here rubbing him, you know, vigorously and as much as like his little legs going, that can also be overwhelming for them. So just being mindful that you don't ramp them up or you ever had somebody tickle you and it's just, okay, a little bit of tickling is fun and then just too much is too much and it puts you over the edge and it's just now it's uncomfortable and you just want them to stop. That's what touching can be. It can be uncomfortable. So you want their touches to be enjoyable and welcomed. While he's upside down, I'm going to brush his teeth. Yeah, oh, look at those choppers. Look at those choppers. At the back of a puppy's mouth, they have no teeth. So I can put my finger right in the back, right in the back of their jaw, and there's no teeth back there. Now, I wouldn't recommend keeping your finger back there because it's uncomfortable for them and it's ugly for you. But if you ever need to open their mouth, little alligator, little alligator, you just slide your finger into the back. And it's like a little fulcrum point. They can't close. Yeah, super. Thank you. And then just thank them for being compliant. You know, how many times do we do stuff around the house and it's taken for granted? How many times do we do a favor or a good deed or something that some, we know somebody would like and there's no acknowledgement? If you acknowledge stuff that they, they do, often... You're going to have a very compliant dog. You know, I had my fingers in his mouth for a pretty good amount of time. So now that he's getting a little fussy with his face, I'm just, I'm not going to go back to his face with my fingers. Because I don't want him to have to say to me, don't touch my face. And the only way he can do that is one, wheeze, two, bite, three, bark. And I don't want any of that. I want him to be with me. Yes, I want him to be with me. I do, I do, I do, I do. I do, I do, I do, I do. I want you to be with me, my little friend. Not on the face, though. Yes, my love. Yes, my love. Okay. Where's our house dog? He's getting a little fussy. If I tell him to stop, what am I what am I really telling him? Well, he stop or no, but I haven't given him a better option. So things that I can do. So he's chewing on my hand. You can have this. You can have this. Or you can have this. Yes, thank you. 
not going to engage with the normal hand. Yes. Right? He wants attention. Oh, now he's going to get a rub on the chest, but he's not going to get my other hand near his face. But if I started rubbing his mouth and rubbing his head and you know, all this kind of stuff, all I'm doing is ramping him up. He just wanted to be connected with me, but my hands near his face were irritating. The reason I got bigger and I got out of his way was basically to say, I don't want you to bite my hand, so I am taking that engagement away. So if you choose a better decision, I'll come back and I'll engage with you, which is what you truly want. Your couple little basics. Here's our sit. Yes. Feet on feet need to be on the ground. I'll just wait them out. Yeah, now you can have it. Now you can have it. Oh there we go. Um feet on the ground, please. Thank you. This is not the ground. This is the ground. Oh, <laughs> did you think we were lying down? Oh, you're so smart. You're so smart. So just my tapping the ground got him to go into a down. Super smart, Poppy. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit. Sit. Okay, he's confused as to what hand, so I'm tucking the other one away. That is really... He doesn't... I'm still holding the treat. He's not getting it until that other foot lands and stays on... Yes! Doesn't get the cookie until those feet are on the ground. And that was a slow delivery of a cookie. That was slow delivery. Down. Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do a hand touch over here. Do a hand touch over here. Not with your feet though, please. We'll try that again. Hand touch. Yes. Okay. Sit. Yes. Feet on the ground. Thank you. Thank you. Feet on the ground. And I'm only saying feet on the ground, one, because it's fun to say, and two, so that you know what I'm waiting for. They don't need to hear that. So in your head, it can look like this. Yes. Okay. Now there's a car driving in. So I'm just going to give him a couple cookies. Yeah, you hear the noise? You hear the car? But I want you to pay attention to me. I'd like that on the ground though. The hit. You're not getting the cookie until that foot goes there. Thank you. You don't get the cookie until the foot is on the ground. Thank you. And you can wait all you want. You can, you can. All the different behaviors you can think of. Yeah. As soon as that foot goes on the ground, say the word yes, give him the cookie. So my words are yes and yep. Oh, and super. Super is another one. Those are my marker words. Marker word is something that the dog knows that the behavior they just provided at that moment in time is the correct behavior, the one that I am looking for, the one that is going to bring that treat. Although I can't get the treat to them immediately. So by saying yes, I've acknowledged and identified the behavior that I'm after. Yes. So that was just an, a, a nice sit. So he's going to get the cookie for that. I'm going to toss him away. Over there. Look at your toy. Go get it. Go find the cookie. Here's your sniffer. Here's your sniffer. Help him out. Here's your sniffer. Here's your sniffer. You, you totally missed it, my friend. There. There y'all goes. There y'all goes. Sit. Yes. Eye contact. And your feet are all over the map today. Okay, eye contact. Eyes. Eyes. Yeah. Super. Maybe I'm just not being fast enough with my delivery of the cookies. Because if I'm faster, your feet stay on the ground. 
Oh, that's another thing to keep in mind. How fast is your delivery system? Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, I'll try that. You're just having a hard time with your feet today. Yeah, there you go. So I raised my hand up a little bit. So try different positions. What works in one moment doesn't necessarily work in another moment. Okay, we do a little yield thing to pressure. And then I think we are complete for the day. Oh, we can do a little field work too. Yeah. Okay. Get my cookies organized. Yep, there goes light. Cookies held in the hand. With the thumb on top of it. I'm going to help get them in position. Yeah. Okay, ready? Yes. Okay, I'm not going to be too worried about the feet at this moment. I can only fight one battle. Yeah. I want you back at my leg. Okay, let's try that again. Here's the... Here's the touch. Wrap them around. Yeah. Yes. Good job. Yes. Good job. That's it. Rub his chest. Rub his chest. Rub his back. Yeah. Can try one more? Here's the touch. Yeah. Yes, good job. Good job, sir. Okay, we can do the other side. Okay, here's the touch. Wrap them into position. Yes. Yes. So this is your heel work. Yes. Yes. Okay, free time. Free time. You did so well. You did so well. You did so well. You did so well. Now, just because he's in free time doesn't mean he gets to exhibit behaviors that are unappealing, like jumping or barking or, well, they don't really bark. Um, yeah, <laughs> you guys don't bark. <laughs> he might have a grunt, but there's no bark. Quick little yield to pressure. Collar and boil it for a minute. Swing. Swing. Thank you. I know I have cookies in my hand. So ideally you want to get your dog dressed before you put cookies in your hand. Especially if they're hungry. Okay. Here's his boot. Hi. Yeah, just gonna tuck him in. You're on your rope. Yeah. Thank you. You can chew on your armadillo, but not the rope piece. You can chew on armadillo. You can chew on armadillo. I know armadillo is not as much fun. But guess what we have coming up tomorrow? We have more rope toys. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Okay. So a little yielding to pressure. So yielding to pressure is the start of leash walking. I just, I just want him move around so this is also why teaching the touch game first is so important yeah it's so super we don't want you chewing on that while we're doing this yeah super i'm just making figure eights yeah super okay you, you and your feet Watson, here! Yeah, super! 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 You and your feet today. What's going on with your feet this moment? What's going on with your feet? What's going on with your feet? Are you just having a foot day? Having a foot day? That's okay. 
You take a moment to rub your ears. Touch all the bits and parts of your ears. Grab your tail. Woof, 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 woof. Grab your tail. Can you do a puppy yoga hug? Puppy yoga hug. I wasn't breathing well. I'm really anxious. I'm not sure why. Remember to breathe. Notice his panting has slowed down. Yes, it had. <laughs> That's not the face. Thank you. Not the face. Thank you. Clean up my hand if you wish. Where's your pinky? Over the middle. Hang your feet. Hang your feet. Yeah. Okay. Here, get your cookie. Get your cookie. Get your cookie. Hmm? Anyone else? So all the things that we do in this room, we do outside. We do in the garage. We do in separate rooms. But this space has the best lighting, and it has a nice confined area, and I can have my puppy mat down. So don't consider your training environment to be in one place. The more places you can be and ask and get confirmation of these behaviors, the better off you're going to be because it's one thing for them to be able to, I'm not going to say the S word, but in this space, but can they do it in the kitchen? Can they do it in the living room? Can they do it in the bathroom, the dining room, the hallway, the front porch, the driveway? If they can't, as soon as you start to notice that they can't provide a behavior that they have confirmed that they know and they understand, their stress level is too high. So go back to where their stress level allowed them to provide the behavior and then solidify it and then go into the space that was causing the challenges for only a moment. Get your behavior and then leave. So things like, do I believe that if I took him to a schoolyard with 30 kids running around, would I be able to get a sit in compliance and eye contact? Absolutely not. But if I start with one kid, and I start with two kids, and then three kids. Okay, here's a little yoga pressure. Yes, super, super. So that's why our training happens everywhere. So my belief is that anytime you engage with your dog, you're either training them or untraining them, meaning you're showing them good behaviors that you want or behaviors that are acceptable and you'll tolerate. But then don't get mad at them if you allow them to jump and bark at the door when somebody knocks. Yeah, good job, thank you. Thank you for noticing, thank you for noticing. Yeah, thank you for noticing. Yeah, good things happen when door knocks. Yeah, good job. Thank you. Thank you. And with the baby puppies, I'll just walk around and start. I'll just knock on stuff. Yeah, and nothing happens. There's no energy attached to it. So those are those are the couple takeaways today of. Um, as you're working through your training, train in multiple places, different times of the day, different energy levels um, for a relaxation. You want to make sure that you're able to get your puppy to relax, that you're able to connect with every single body part every day, that they're comfortable with it. And if they're not comfortable with a space or a part being held or touched, You've got to do it more often in shorter durations because they need to be comfortable. Having a dog that says, no, don't touch my foot, not appropriate. All the body parts belong to you. You just happen to allow the dog to have them when you're not requiring them. So if I want to hold his tail, I can hold his tail. Now, can I pull on his tail? Absolutely not. Do I practice tugging his tail? Yeah because I want to make sure that if he goes home and somebody accidentally grabs his tail like a little kid, 
that there's not going to be an adverse reaction. There will be a reaction. They're not they're not automatons. They're not going to be the proper word. They're not going to not react, but I don't want there to be a turn and a snap. So it's like if I grab his foot, yeah, it's like my foot until I tell you otherwise. Okay, so he's getting a little frustrated. There, thank you. So he didn't get his foot back until he took his teeth off of me. Okay, so we're going to put you into a relaxed state, and then we're going to call it a night, a day, or a whatever. We're going to end this moment in time. Hi. Okay, I'm not going to rub him anymore. My rubbing him is just amping him up. What I am going to do is bring him to a puppy hold and just get him to chill. So puppy hold is arm around him, under his chest, and just get him to chill. That was very nice. Thank you. Okay. Release. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much.